Hello, in this video we're going to talk about hemorrhoids, anal hemorrhoids. This is an overview, an introduction. Now, hemorrhoid plexi are normal anatomical structures located within the anal canal. If the hemorrhoid plexi enlarge, they can protrude outside the anal canal, causing symptoms. It is important to know that hemorrhoid plexi essentially are the veins, the rectal veins, forming a plexus. So when we think of hemorrhoids, we have to remember veins. Now, let's compare the normal with the abnormal. We need to review the anatomy. So the pectinate line, also known as a dentate line, is a clinically important landmark due to the fact that it is visible and approximates the level of certain anatomical changes. And these changes I'm talking about are embryological in origin. So anything above the pectinate line we say is endoderm in origin and anything below the pectinate line is ectoderm in origin. And why does this matter? Well, if it's endoderm in origin, which is above the pectinate line, it means that it's essentially part of the abdominal organs. And so pain could be very diffuse and not really localized. However, if it's an ectoderm in origin, so the cells below the pectinate line, ectoderm in origin means essentially the skin. And as we know, our skin is very sensitive. So when pain occurs below the pectinate line, within the ectoderm area, this will cause um, very localized pain and quite painful pain for that matter. There are muscles also surrounding the anal canal. These are the internal sphincteric muscles, which is controlled involuntarily, and then the external anal sphincter, which is under voluntary control. The levator ani is another important muscle that makes up the pelvic floor. Hemorrhoid plexi, plexuses or plexi are here, and there is an external and internal hemorrhoid plexus. And again, these are normal anatomical structures. In the condition known as hemorrhoids, these plexi enlarge and can cause some serious discomfort. The enlargement can be from external hemorrhoids or from internal hemorrhoids, and internal hemorrhoids are located above the pectinate line. The signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids differ a bit depending if it's an external hemorrhoid or if it's an internal hemorrhoid. An internal hemorrhoid can often be painless, but there can be a feeling of rectal fullness or discomfort and mucus discharge. External hemorrhoids are quite painful. They can cause sudden severe perianal pain and a perianal mass might be felt. And there can be pain on defecation, particularly if, the th if, the throm if thrombosis occurs within the external hemorrhoids. And again, it makes sense because external hemorrhoids are below the pectinate line. And as we know, the pectinate, below the pectinate line is ectoderm in origin, and so it's very well localized pain. The risk factors for developing hemorrhoids include increased intra-abdominal pressure, severe constipation, pregnancy, obesity, portal hypertension, and heavy lifting. All of these essentially cause some form of increase in intra-abdominal pressure, which means more pressure within the abdominal cavity. When you have more pressure, the veins must overcome this pressure as it drains back through the abdominal cavity. And because it's, there's so much pressure in the abdominal cavity, these veins enlarge and the veins being, in this case, the rectal veins, they enlarge. So we learned about the signs and symptoms and the risk factors of hemorrhoids. On examination, we want to position the patient in a left lateral position and uh, feet knees up to the chest to expose the anal area. And on general inspection, uh, external hemorrhoid may be visible. However, the use of a pro proctoscope or an anoscope might be useful to in to examine for internal hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids can also be staged. The internal hemorrhoids can be staged from one to four. And it is important to stage because this means treatment will also differ. Looking more closely at the anatomy, the middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein 
drain the anal area. The middle rectal veins drain into the inferior mesenteric vein, and the inferior rectal drains eventually into the inferior vena cava through the pudendal vein. And of course we have to remember the pectinate line or the dentate line. The internal hemorrhoid plexi above the pectinate line and the external hemorrhoid plexa lies below the pectinate line. The internal hemorrhoids, stage one, there is slight enlargement of the internal hemorrhoid plexus. Stage two, the hemorrhoid can go past the pectinate line. Stage three, further protruding down where it is visible in the anal sphincter. And stage four is where the hemorrhoid has fully protruded out. In an external hemorrhoid, as mentioned, the pain is there because the cells around the area are from an ectodermal embryological origin, thus causing pain. The pain is even more severe when thrombosis of the external hemorrhoids occur. External hemorrhoids with thrombus can be very painful, but often resolve within two weeks. And they often also leave skin tags. So let's look at treatment now. Treatment for stage one and two internal hemorrhoids consists of high fiber diet, a sitz bath, and a sitz bath is a warm, shallow bath that cleanses the perineum which is the space between the rectum um, and the genital area. Steroid creams and promoxin can also be used. Promoxin is an anesthetic and an anti-pruritic agent, so anti-itching. For stage three and four, a rubber band ligation can be done. And a rubber band ligation is essentially a procedure in which the hemorrhoids are tied off at its base with rubber bands, and this will cut off the blood supply. Other options include photocoagulation, where infrared light is used to break down the hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoidectomy can also be performed, which is essentially cutting the hemorrhoid out.